The time is 6.54. Could we please call the June 30th, 2021 special board meeting of the Niles, Maine District Library to order. Margaret, please take the roll. Trustee Dublin? Here. Trustee uh, Schoenfeld? Here. Trustee Nicola? Here. Trustee Wazanski? Here. Trustee Olson? Here. Trustee Keen Adams? Here. And Trustee Hanusha is absent and gave previous notice. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Could we please stand and say the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our next item on the agenda is public comments. Cindy, do you have a list? I think the first comment should be why you kept everyone waiting. Yes. yes. Okay. Trustee Keen Adams, please uh, refrain yourself from output. I won't. Well, then we'll have to take care of that. We later. want an explanation. We yes. Want an explanation. Yeah, we we wasted our time. We I'm want sorry. I'm sorry it couldn't be avoided. I apologize. Thank you for waiting. I think it was an extra. 10 minutes, I agree. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes. minutes. No, 24, 24 once we started. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe I counted wrong. There's a shot. Say my name. My name is Kathy Toy. I'm and sorry. I've got public comment. One second, please. Too much chaos. Oh. Public comments are beginning at 6.56. Thank you. Please proceed. Kathy Toy again. I'd like to state for the record what an embarrassment, I believe, Carolyn Driblick, Olivia Hanusiak, Joe Makula, and Suzanne Schoenfeld are to the library, the Niles main community, and the village of Niles. You have wrecked so much havoc on this library since you were nominated and elected yourselves officers on the board. You want to slash the budget keep the pandemic COVID library hours at 54 per week. And I'm not sure if you know, by doing this, you will forfeit free money in the form of the per capita grant. There are standards that need to be followed in order to receive this money. I have copies of the standards if you'd like to read them. You are proposing to eliminate outreach programs, cut payroll expenses, and you are currently involved in a labor relations board investigation for retaliating against the employee union and you forced Susan Dove Lemke to resign. Wow, just mind boggling and insane. You are proposing a new policy for media access that has not even been attached to the agenda. That is a huge transparency problem. Funny, that's what Olivia, Joe, and Suzanne campaigned for. More transparency. I guess you don't have to follow your campaign promises once you are elected. Sounds like you lied to the people who voted for you. Carolyn Driblet has directed staff to refer all media requests to her. Fulfilling media requests is the job of our public relations and marketing supervisor. Carolyn, it seems to me that you are afraid the truth will get out. I submitted a FOIA request for library and personal correspondence between Carolyn, Joe, Suzanne, and the new CPA firm. The three trustees claim they have no correspondence relating to the request. I have a hard time believing that. Are you communicating via carrier pigeon? <laughs> I believe you three are deliberately hiding this information, which is a violation of the FOIA law. The majority of this board is costing taxpayers more money. Examples, labor relations investigation, CPA firm hiring, new labor lawyer, all because of your inept ability to properly oversee the library.
Carolyn, Olivia, Joe, and Suzanne, I believe you have never put the interest of the library, staff, or community first. You put yourself first with your crazy budget cuts, micromanaging every aspect of the library operation, including in Joe's handwritten budget notes to approve new categories of books. In closing, I am asking the four of you, Carolyn Driblick, Olivia Hanusiak, Joe McCoola, and Suzanne Schoenfeld to resign immediately <laughs> for what I believe to be a breach of your fiduciary duties as trustees. You have shown that type of I can't, I lost my track. You've shown that type of behavior since you were sworn in and are capable of overseeing the library. Thank you. Before we call the next person up, I, I, I'm unable to address every single um, comment that you made, Kathy, but I do want to mention that some of that will be covered with our agenda items later, but one point I did want to make, any FOIA requests that are responded to are responded to through our attorney. So if you did not receive documentation, then the documents you requested are not FOIA. We don't, that's not a personal decision on our part. It's done through our, the library's legal attorney. Thank you. Welcome. David Sutherland. I would like to mention that if you're giving a public statement and you want someone's attention, you feel free to wait until they're looking at you. Hi, my name is David Sutherland. Sutherland. I would like to make a comment on tonight's agenda, but since there's vague documentation of it, I want to remind everybody of the racist comments Joe McCullough said while campaigning for the position on the Niles Main District Library Board. He said, we should concentrate on people learning English because that's the language here. This is what Joe said. Mm -hmm. Instead of stocking up on books in several, in seven different languages, if we got people to assimilate, assimilate is the word he used, and learn English better, I think we would do more good than increasing our inventory of foreign language books. That's disgusting, Joe. Mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, I agree. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Neither Olivia Hanusiak nor Susan Schoenfeld denounced this racism at any time, but one did, and that's trustee Becky King Adams, who didn't skip a beat in immediately addressing these hateful words. She said, I wholeheartedly disagree with Mr. McClure. She said it's important to pe for people to be, able to, to be able to read in their own language and that books are windows. So if you open a book and you can never see yourself in it, then it's hard to figure out, figure out who you are. All of our suspicions of the horribleness to come has been proven true with your dismantling of our community's cherished library. Everyone in this community should know the names of exactly who is doing this. Olivia Hanusiak, where is she? She needs to resign. Susan Schoenfeld needs to resign. Joe McCullough, with his racist comments, needs to resign. And Carolyn Driblick, you need to resign. It's not too late for you to get up from under this. The people are rising up. Save Niles Library. Good evening. I'm sure that you have noticed that there have been a lot of people coming to speak publicly during these board meetings since you have been elected to office. Maybe you've even noticed that most of the commenters are disgusted and with the cuts and changes that you have made to the library. Carolyn, Joe, Suzanne, and Olivia, does this indicate to you that you are doing a good job? Because to me, it indicates that you're doing damage to a cultural institution and that the community is not behind you or your actions. Actually, 
there are many signs that highlight what a bad job you are doing. Let's see. May 24th, special board meeting. June 1st, last minute budget workshop. June 2nd, last minute budget workshop number two. June 3rd, last minute budget workshop number three. June 14th, special board meeting. June 18th, special board meeting. And today, June 30th, special board meeting announced exactly 48 hours in advance. A well-run organization does not need seven special board meetings in a given month. Mm -hmm. This is a sign of two things. One, a board who is floundering, impatient, and has no idea what they are doing. Yep. And two, a board who is hoping to decrease public engagement by decreasing people's abilities to attend and comment on such a large number of meetings. Yep. Just because you can announce a meeting 48 hours in advance doesn't mean you should announce a meeting with exactly 48 hours notice. Another sign of a board taking unpopular and drastic steps to dismantle a beloved institution when local school boards and administrations write in to express their displeasure with the effect you will have on their students. Do you not care about children? Do you not care about early literacy? Do you not actually care about the taxpayers? Because the taxpayers have children at these daycares and schools, and their education and access to early literacy is being trampled on by the board. Here's another great example of a board who is not taking their care positions seriously. At the regular board meeting on June 16th, we learned that there are two outstanding FOIA requests that four trustees have not responded to. Although it doesn't list the four by name, I am assuming that the four are, once again, Carolyn Gerblin, Joe Makula, Olivia Hanusiak, and Suzanne Schoenfeld. What do the four of you have to hide by not responding to two FOIA requests? <coughs> And while we're on the subject of these four trustees all somehow not responding to the same FOIA request, <coughs> it leads me to wonder how many secret conversations are the four of you having? Because it seems like a big coincidence that you all vote in a block, ignore the same FOIA requests, can all attend meetings on the same dates with very little notice, and seem very coordinated in your requests to table and approve motions. And finally, the dynamics of this board we have two board meeters, meet members who don't seem to have any opinions of their own or have any curiosity or interest in the cuts, proposals, and policies they are voting on. Suzanne Schoenfeld and Olivia Hanusiak have never asked questions or had substantial comments to make about any of these agenda items. Why are you even on this board if you have nothing to say? As for the two of you who do have things Joe and Carolyn, you keep talking about efficiencies, like having librarians reshelve books and clean the library in their copious spare time in between doing their actual job duties. You show an incredible amount of ignorance about the job that these people do, an incredible lack of respect for them. You are trying to micromanage the staff without understanding what their jobs actually entail. This is not what the Board of Trustees should be doing, and is yet another example of the abuse of power you are trying to wield. Are you getting tired of all these public comments? I'm getting tired of standing in front of you being ignored, watching Carolyn shuffle her papers instead of listening to people, or to tell a board leader members those that she doesn't agree with. If you four were to resign and give this job over to the people who actually use, respect, and understand the library, then we can all be confident that the library is being entrusted to trustees who actually care about the organization. Pam Wolf. I'll stand back to this microphone because I don't really need it. I'm Pam Wolf. I am a lifelong bibliophile. Uh, the first thing I would like to say um, 
is that it does show the gross incompetence of the president of this board that she will not respond to any sort of phone messages from her board members. Uh, I wanted to put that in there because we saw that right now. The second thing is there is a agenda item about media policy. Now, I wanted to prepare a lot point by point on this. Unfortunately, we were not given the media policy, which is, I believe, required. So that is another instance of incompetence. Therefore, I will speak on what I know or have heard. And that is that all media requests are to go through Carolyn Driblick. I have a couple of comments about that. First of all, we have someone in the library who is quite capable because it is part of his job to respond to media requests. Secondly, if that is also regarding the rest of the board members, I believe that the board members are also quite capable of responding to media requests. Thirdly, the 4th of July is on Sunday. And if this media policy is telling members of staff that they are not allowed to speak to the press, we may actually say that a, a, an entity may say, we restrict certain people to speak as the library itself. However, not allowing people, I'm sorry, I can wait until you're done to speak. I'd you like to water. I'm sorry. You can look at me while you're getting water. I know. So, if you are actually telling staff members that they may not speak to the press at all, or the other board members, for example, how do you feel about the hours being cut? Now, that is not a question that is asking people to speak as the library. That is asking their personal opinion. And that is a constitutionally protected right. You, as a president, you as a board, are an elected government body and do not have the right to violate our constitutional rights, anyone's constitutional rights, and goodness sake, not the week before the 4th of July, when people fought and died for this right. Also, Carolyn Driblick, if you have looked, everybody, at articles from the media, does not respond to media requests. Therefore, she is, by her own example, incapable of fulfilling the job that she wants to appoint herself to. So, because of this gross incompetence, because of the ripping apart of this beautiful library and the fabric of Niles itself, the disenfranchisement of the poorest, youngest, and oldest among us, I ask now, I demand that Sue Schoenfeld, Joe Macula, Olivia not here, and Carolyn Driblick, I demand that you resign, and also I demand that we get an explanation of why Carolyn Drulick could not be here on time and was 24 minutes late because God knows we all were here and we're just volunteers. We didn't get elected. So you are accountable to us, the body public. So tell us why you weren't here. I have spoken. Liz, G-N-A-T-E-K. Dobry wieczór, nazywam się Elżbieta. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. My name is Liz Nazek, and I have been a resident of Niles and a patron of this library since the age of nine, when my parents moved here from the city back in 1984. I'm going to speak more from personal experience. Great job, everybody, with the, with the agenda stuff. <laughs> For the last 37 years of my life, the library has been a consistent and reliable source of support in all the stages of my life. My parents could not, or maybe didn't even know, to take me to the library when we lived in the city. Being that they were hardworking immigrants and probably didn't even have a clue as to where the nearest library was. But when we moved to Niles during my childhood, on the advice of neighbors who had children my age, my parents began bringing me here to this library practically every week. 
A whole new world opened up to me. The vast selection of fiction books provided me with a sphere of wonder and imagination that ignited in me a passion for storytelling that I still have to this day. Those books also aided me in ensuring my proficiency in speaking, reading, and writing the English language. Since my parents could not help me with the majority of my school work due to the language barrier. When working for peanuts to pay off a mortgage and to provide your child with a much better life than you had, affording to learn English because that's the language here kind of takes a back seat. In all these 37 years, this library has provided invaluable resources to me, whether my education or whether I need to translate or find something out for my parents because they weren't English proficient. <clears throat> now it's been helping me with resources on how best to support my aging mother. Some of you elected trustees have said that you wanted to provide a viable, sustainable library through collaboration with staff and residents. That has been shown to be a lie. That you felt it was your civic responsibility, I believe that was you, miss, to advocate for a strong library community, to work for and with people, to mutually establish goals and work together. Again, this has been shown to be a lie. Why lies? Because everything the, new, the, newly, elected, the newly elected trustees have thus far pushed through and are trying to push through are ideas, platforms, and goals that were never disclosed never shared with the public when they ran for these trustee positions. Omissions are lies, especially in election campaigns. It was omitted from campaigning that one of your goals was to severely cut services to the local elderly and to local schools. It was also conveniently omitted from campaigning that one of the goals was to cut staff and to cut library hours. To cut 16 hours from the library week, that's cutting two days. Are we supposed to be a Monday through Wednesday library or 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. library? <clears throat> to make such an ignorant assumption about your fellow citizens without speaking to them first, without first gathering community input and deciding on your own that your feelings are right, that people won't return to the library due to the COVID pandemic, that we all buy ebooks that we all buy on Amazon, that none of us are gonna come back here. That's kind of ignorant. And it's also very undemocratic. <clears throat> I could go on and on about other issues, especially in relation to the extremely negligent act of canceling the roof replacement. Good luck to you, I hope this building doesn't pancake. Um, I would implore the trustees to use some reason to be responsible and to keep your oath and to actually listen to your fellow citizens who are also your neighbors. Thank you. Bart, uh, Nick, Gwen. Hello, everyone. My name is Bart Gwen. Um, I came here this morning, uh, this morning, actually I woke up this morning across the street thinking about the library and what it meant to me. Um, it meant a lot back in uh, 1998 when I worked with a bunch of people with a referendum to get this going. To me, it's like yin-yang, we're going absolutely the different direction. And I think that's really bad for the community. And I think that's really bad for people who might be myopic. Now I think about una lengua para hablar because the world is more than just one way of thinking. But anyways, I die freaking grass. This is, I was asked to uh, to talk about this, but I would start talking myself because I'm a little precious Irish guy. But I'm going to say good evening. I'm going to read to you an opinion that was published today in the Now's Journal Topic. Uh, it's in the Speak Up section. Yeah, I didn't write this, but a lot of that I do identify because I read it a couple times and I said yes. Not everything. Um, but here I go. Against trustees. To the trustees, the parishioners of John Hubbuff, which is I am a parishioner and I identify with this, 
do not support your agenda to destroy the Niles Lane District Library. Many of us in the St. John and Bluff conjugation did not support you initially, not. and in fact voted for you in your agenda of fiscal restraint. We believed you when you said that there would be no staff reductions, reductions in programming, and increased in outreach to the community. There are all lies. Your current budget is full of cruelty, tone-deaf responses to the community, evidence that you are completely unprepared and uneducated about the importance of a vibrant library in the community and lies. You are in fact are cutting into a significant <coughs> number of library staff and reducing public access to library resources and reducing programming because of some of convoluted notion that is somehow better to pay the senior center for programs and cut off non Niles Library patrons for these programs altogether. You are stifling the library's mission to spread the joy of reading to the most vulnerable members of the community. And it's not only the mission, it's the mission to spread knowledge and education and God forbid entertainment that someone picks up or like before I picked up a, a magazine about World War II uh, German aircraft. That excited me. We have to have that excitement here. It's going the different way. It's going down. And I don't like it. And I continue. This, the SGB community cannot support your agenda or endorse your lies. You are the definition of a pariah and should be cast out from the community. Not only should you be recalled, but you should also be barred from St. John Rebuff entirely. Either withdraw with a cool yes. budget of yours or resign. Gary, K-A-R-S-H-N-A. Carson. Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, my thoughts here are very simple. I mean, I'm a resident over in the Renaissance Condo Association, and I'm also living there. One place. We have a thousand residents that live there as well. Many of them are seniors. And quite a few people, you know, that live there are very much interested in the library services and that George Finch over here. And when we had a conversation about, you know, the changes that were going on at the library, you know, we were kind of looking at each other like, well, do you really know what's going on? And I thought, well, I know they're, you know, cutting, you know, personnel and making some changes. But, you know, what is their vision? And uh, I said, well, I really couldn't tell you. And I don't know if they're running on their campaign promises and delivering which is unusual for politicians, no disrespect. But, you know, that's often the case. And so what I'd like to ask you this evening is, if you could articulate, especially Carolyn, since you're the president, I think you pretty much have this order under control, is what is the vision of the library? How do you see this in one to five years out? Well, I've been told I do not speak for the entire board, so we don't want to make that error. And uh, we do have a vision and we do have a plan, but unfortunately a lot of negativity and inaccurate statements are floating around, not only the community, the media, social media, and we have not even had an opportunity to have a community meeting, let alone a staff meeting, to delve into details. So it's unfortunate that a lot of the half-truths or totally false statements are out there generating all this anxiety and, and discourse. And I can't really sit here and go into our entire plan, but it certainly wasn't to walk into this. This wasn't our purpose. And I guess it's unfortunate if you don't report, report the facts and you report the, the false statements, this is what we get. And it certainly would sound if all these false statements were true. We're not planning on helping this library. We all ran. I'm making this a better place. I've said it a million times. I've made recommendations and suggestions. None of that makes the paper. None of that makes Facebook. None of that makes next door Niles. But all the <coughs> false statements. I hope soon we can have a community meeting and we can speak about what our plans are and what we actually did with the budget or didn't do with the budget. 
because I think you would find out our plan is not to destroy this library. We have plans to make it better than it's ever been. And our, and our plan is everyone is in at the library. My focus is not to have our staff all over the community, but make this such a pivotal and, and like an outstanding building that everyone's driven here. It's a ghost town. We need to turn it around. <laughs> Seriously, have been in this library from the beginning it opens till the end it closes. You have too many hours where there are there are no patrons. We need to come up with a plan to bring them here. I've been in and out of this library for six years. Okay, well, I mean, if you could, um, can you, you know, articulate what is the mission, though? I mean, are you trying to reduce costs, um, reduce hours, no, because the you're mission? trying to save money, or are you trying to make um, broad out the services, but just be more cost effective? But, I mean, what is the actual mission? If you, you can articulate that, then I well, think I you can give you. Make an but if you can't articulate that, I think you should have open meetings where people can come, and then you won't get this venom if you're sharing information and be upfront yep. and let people know Absolutely. what it is that you're doing. You can avoid all this abuse. Absolutely. So what actually so is actually, your mission? In, our you know, vision, our vision, and our, and our plans for the future have been repeated during all of those unnecessary, according to a lot of people, budget meetings. This library has never taken the time to even sit and go through our budget in the six years that have been on this board. That's a mess. Like, no, it's not. And um, what we are, our plan is to have programs where we don't have two and three people. We need to put our heads together and drive the people to this library. And wherever else they're going, it's not here. We need programs that people actually want to attend. Maybe it's the way we schedule. Maybe it's the coordination of similar similar types of programs. There's a lot of ways to look at this. No, our plan is not to cut everything. It's to enhance the service. It's to have programming that everyone wants to attend, which increases our numbers. Not just online. We need people in this building. That's why we have staff. But there's much more to go into. And I wish we could have had time to have a community meeting. We actually planned the staff meeting. But with all these outbursts and all, all these, these meetings bring comments. But there's a lot of else that's going on. Distracting the library to even function as a library. So until we can dismantle all of that, we can't move forward. And that's my plea with everyone. If you want this library to grow, we need to work together so we can move forward. <laughs> and, and, and this is my point, so well, I think we will that, work at it. Should have kept the budget. Well, well, just shut it. up and let her finish talking. Let her talk. This is a real shit show here, isn't it? This was fun, so come to see. Are you kidding me? This is it. The idea is to talk to the board because, after all, you do represent the people. And uh, this is my first yes. meeting that I've attended, and I hear a lot of people saying that you're not following what the people want to do. So, I would suggest to you that you do a better job of reaching out to the absolutely. people because, absolutely, it's, it's not what you want to do necessarily, it's what the people want to do. And then you can. You have those open meetings, and if they're and if you get there on time, and you know you treat people with respect, they'll treat you with respect. So I suggest that you think about that, and that way you can get your mission out there, and maybe you'll have better support. I don't know how this type of environment could breed a better meeting. That's my concern. <laughs> all this, all these hours, we've been doing this for almost two months now. I'd like to see a change. I don't know when that's because going to happen. Yeah, I do. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. We had six minutes from the Q&A for public comment. Please, yeah, you limit us to 30 minutes. Thank you. It's not a Q&A, it's public comment. Mm -hmm. It's very true. Are there any more public comments? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I have a public comment. Before we get to start it, is it okay? Excuse me, please. She's speaking. Thank you. Public comment started at 6.56. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. What? 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 what?
I'm sorry. You spoke for six minutes. Yeah. You can extend it for six minutes. Okay. Oh, that's the point mark, sir. You want to pass it? I signed for the question. Who's next in line? Yes, who's next in line? Yes, who's next in line? Is the press of her speaking? Margaret Carr? No, 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 no,
of the Niles Main Library District. Thank you. Six minutes for this for my comments or conversation and the track. So I have to flip one more person. So how long is he? Six minutes? How long is this? Four. Okay, so we can get one more person. I move that we allow everyone on the list to speak tonight. One more person and then we'll have to take a vote. You can't tell me twelve minutes or something wrong. Four times three is twelve minutes. We can do it in twelve minutes. Four people will speak for three minutes. All right. Yeah, we signed up on time to speak, and we want to speak. Okay. lost. Um, so you want to go on? So how many so the, people? The policy right, is five, five minutes. I know. Yes. Per person. So, okay. so the procedure is, there were two minutes left, I was going to give it to someone, but I guess what we want, we can now take a vote. Well, we, want, we wasted 24 minutes, okay? I, mean, this, I don't know, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out the 24. I left, yeah, but I left at 6. You left at 6.30. No, I didn't. No, I you were back at... I wrote it down. 24 minutes. But anyway, um, excuse me, Eric Potter. Excuse me. Okay, please, please have a seat and let's not cause much more. I'm not sure. Okay, so Cindy, we had two minutes. I guess they don't want to use those two minutes, but what we can do is to expand. We can take a vote for how many more people are left? Four. Oh no, I don't know where she can. <laughs> okay, well, we can take a vote. Five, um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I have um, two. eleven and public comments. Too long. Yeah. That's too long. Um, too much. That's too, I mean, we have a school agenda tonight. It is a special board meeting, that's why we call this, and we're allowing the 30 minutes public comments as we typically do. Um, if somebody wants to speak, there's two minutes. One I move that we speak. change the rules for tonight and allow the people okay. that want to speak. No, we can take a vote. Take a vote to extend it for what? 20 minutes? Until so everyone who wishes to speak speaks. No, not tonight. We were here. Well, people speak. So what? It's a policy. No, this should go on for a minute. That's okay. We've been here that late before. What's your hurry? Just limit us to two minutes each. So wait, 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 what's the, the complaint here is that I was gone for 24 minutes. Actually, I figured I was gone 12. But meeting, started, <laughs> meeting, started at, meeting started per your words at 6.54. <laughs> well, anyway, because I don't want to belabor this. So, so are you saying that I owe you 24 minutes, so we'll add the 24 minutes, and then we need... To move on with our meeting. Is that satisfactory? Yeah. If you have a couple two minutes each. We can have a public no. comment after. No. 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 The people are here now, Joe, they should speak. Okay. okay. They all right. Right. We need to send them home all day. That's not fair to the public. So we have to take a vote irregardless of what we do here. So what's the motion? The motion is to allow everyone who would like to speak, at the very least, the people who signed up the opportunity to do so. Okay, we have 24 minutes that you claim the meeting is late. That's not part of my motion. Well, that motion is not going to work then because we, we have other okay, questions. Okay, second. Second. Motion really that nice we time. use the 24 minutes okay. that you said for mm -hmm. people to speak. Thank you. Would you please make that motion? I make the motion that we allow 24 minutes for people to speak. Okay, do I get a second? Vote? No, everyone who signed up on speech should speak. And let's start now. We can't we can't have a wasting our time. You're wasting our time. We'll get 24 minutes. Yes, I know the motion. Can we have a second? Roll call. Yes, okay. At least we have more people to the conference. Yes, at least we have get to hear more residents. Okay. 
Yes. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Susan Del Blanke needs to come back because she was the library of very good. And whatever made her resign, we need to work with her to get her back. Can we please let Trustee Dribbley roll? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Trustee McCula? Yes. Trustee? Yes. Rosensky? Trustee Olson? No. And Trustee Keen Adams? No. Okay. So, so what is public it? comments is over. Okay. No, that's not what your motion is. No. no. That was no. Right. 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 The motion was to extend 24 minutes. and 24 more minutes. Okay, well, it's very unfair. So we have got four votes. Oh, good. Sorry. That's good. Let's move on. Four to two. Okay, let's go. Who's next? So, 24 minutes. What time are we starting? Now, uh, two minutes per person. 7.39. No. <coughs> maybe if we limited George Button. Per, excuse me. Maybe yes. if we limited to two minutes per person, more people would get it. We have to get a motion. Just, so, just let them know. <laughs> George Button. But Joe, they said they go to my name. They're there. But that's the one. George Sun. I know that. I know that. I know that. Okay? Okay? From Jimmy Sergio, Louis Mary, s'il vous plaît. Je suis perdu, I'm lost with you. Okay? And I speak a little bit English and, I, and uh, different things, Jap Japanese, Chinese, all. This is America. I'm a director of an algorithm bank, 20 years. Go to nursing homes, we have centers. And we sing in different languages, my friend. This is America. Not English, English, English. Mm -hmm. I worked, I worked for the British government 25 years before I came here. Okay? I've been to so many countries. And I love America. I love this vibrate. I've been here. I've been living here since 1986 in Niles. I've been in the library. Well, I go to the, 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 the you know, library. I'm looking for French songs. Old French songs. I'm with a group singing French songs too. The, the people are older than I am, but it's, it's available here. It's terrific. The staff outstanding. I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm a bit of a dinosaur with, that, with computers. I go down to the down basement there, and they're outstanding. They help me out. And the children's section is really unbelievable. You've got to come here. I don't know how many of you folks have been coming here. To know, if I go to work for the British government, for the department, I try to find out as much as I can about it. I go. I, I you know, I can. The Niles Library, I don't know how many of you have been here. It's a fantastic library. And we, we cut the hours. The free programs we have here, it will be cut to. And now we have to pay for, for the some of the classes, many of the classes, a few free ones. But here, it's free. I've been sitting in this room how many times, listening, laughing, joking, everything. This has been part of my life. Please, folks, whatever you do, don't, don't, don't damage what Susan did before. She's 23 years. She did an ex I think she did an excellent job here. Excellent. I don't know the politics. I don't know anything, but she was outstanding. She made, oh, the staff would make everybody feel welcome. Okay, and you folks can adapt to make, keeping the, you know, what we've been doing for so many years, they'll be great. They'll be great. And you can start improving it slowly. But don't cut the hours. Don't cut, you know, Sunday is a beautiful day to come here. Okay, besides going to church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Okay? But the, the down here, you can come down here and, and you know, talk to people and relax and learn things. And I'm keeping quiet now. Please help the library, whatever you folks do. Thank you again. Rabina Button. Hello, uh, my name is Rabina. That was my dad. As you 
as you have heard, um, we have been here since 1986. I've been here, I'm aging myself, but I've been here 35 years in Niles. Um, throughout that time, I have noticed what an amazing library it is, right? I have seen this place tore down to be rebuilt to what an amazing place it is today. Yeah. I remember all that. Yeah. I am a heavy library user. Yeah. I'm a librarian myself. All right, and um, not only do I use it, I bring my family, as you can see, I bring my seven-year-old daughter, she is a heavy library user. Since you have changed the system to Polaris, I know, I look on my record, and I can see that I have saved $70,000. This is how heavily I use this library. All right, no, I do not go on Amazon and buy my books, okay? Yep. I am not, we are not a upper class citizens. All right, we do not have money to throw around to Amazon. Yeah. All right, I use my library heavily. Okay, um, it's, it's, it's heart, it's the heart of the community. All right, by reducing their hours, you are breaking down the community. When am I supposed to bring my daughter here? She goes to school, she comes home and does homework at four o'clock. After homework, it's dinner. Okay, usually that's when I come and bring her after dinner, we have time that. If you're reducing the hours, I cannot bring her, all right? With less hours, is less programming, and she cannot, have you seen the children's programming? Have you ever witnessed the amazing children's program that happened? I was just here on Sunday to do the chalk event outside, okay? That was, it was filled, okay? Marianne did an amazing job, and there were so many people here. All right, uh, working together to build a mural, a community mural at the library. All right, and you know, if the library was actually open on Sunday, they probably would have came in here. You would have a very busy library. Not once before the pandemic have I come here and it's not full of people. Yep. It's always busy here. Yes. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of try to quote the mayor. Niles is a place to raise your family. By taking down the hours of the library, you are not doing that. Okay? Um, I know community members want to leave Niles. I know um, I'm thinking about it. If you are going to break down the library, it's not a place I want to be. It's not a place I want to raise my family. Thank you very much. about 2008 I've been the beat reporter from the Journal on Topics newspapers covering the Niles. Um, I don't often speak at these types of meetings. My, my job is to understand what's going on and report it. Uh, but tonight you're discussing media policy and how the library staff will interact with media so that directly could impact my ability to uh, cover this institution. Um, I don't know specifically what's proposed uh, because it wasn't part of the agenda packet. Um, as I said, my, my job is to understand subject matter and relay it to the public. And as Joe McCoola can attest, we've had many long conversations when he was doing the various referendums through the years, um, even this most recent one, concerning the elected ethics board of privilege. Um, last week I was told I needed to submit questions in writing. Uh, so I submitted some FOIAs to get that information in there. I'm still waiting on it. Um, I left Mr. Lick an email and voicemail and weren't returned. But, you know, I don't know the specifics, so I'm not going to. That, that's just. Okay. Um, a couple of things I just want you to keep in mind um, when you're discussing the media policy. I've had a great relationship working with Sasha for many years. Um, I, don't, I don't know if everything is to be written in advance. Does that mean I can't call Sasha and try and understand on a, on a Friday if you've got a weekend event, if it's something that our photographers might be able to shoot? Because that's 
a lot of what I talked to Sasha about. Yes, we cover everything from going to things like the yarn event and taking pictures and that to stories about the budget. You know, I I want to be able to I need to have a central person when we're on deadlines to be able to contact, contact quickly, who will be knowledgeable about the subject matters at hand. So whatever your policy is going to be, I would hope that you keep those things in mind. Thank you very much. Carolyn, but now I can FOIA that. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Many of those have been scheduled at the last minute, like this one. They go on for three or four hours, and agenda items are added without any context or documentation. How can you how can anyone, let alone working families, be expected to stay informed and have their voices heard? Either this is an attempt to avoid public scrutiny yeah. to keep most people from seeing what has been going on, mm -hmm. or you are incapable of properly managing your work as trustees. Maybe it's both, but it must stop. I want to remind Ms. Schoenfeld, Mr. McCula, and Ms. Hanushek, who can't even be bothered to be here tonight, that you ran on community input and transparency. It's not just hypocrisy, uh -huh. it's an abuse of the power of your public office. But many of us are really committed to shining a light on what's been going on, and we have shown up here tonight. The fact that we are willing to spend another night away from our families, and our jobs, and our personal lives, should tell you that what you are doing is far beyond the norm, and a violation of your duties as trustees. And it's not just us. The boards and superintendents of school districts 63 and 71 have told you that what you are doing is going to hurt thousands of students. Our congresswomen and state representatives have called on you to stop these drastic cuts to staff, hours, and services. Even our mayor, a fiscal conservative, had to come to a meeting after a 12-hour shift to tell you that services to seniors and children are essential. And we learned just last night that you are now facing charges of unfair labor practices and retaliation against staff. There is no greater waste of taxpayer money than fighting the staff's legal right to organize. Even your fellow parishioners, the good people attending St. John's Gray Book, have written an op-ed in the paper telling you this is not what they voted for and even asking that you resign your positions. I am here tonight to stand with the parishioners of St. John Grayba. I stand with AFSCME Local 31. I stand with our local, state, and federal leaders. I stand with our schools. I stand with Susan Doug Lemke, who gave 23 years of service to this community. I stand with all of the community members who could not be here tonight. I stand with all of the dedicated staff of the Niles Main District Library. It is not that all of us are being alarmist or are misinformed. It is that what you are doing is so alarming. Before you took office, this was a star library, recognized as one of the best in the country. If you go ahead with your cuts to hours, staff, and services, we will no longer meet the minimum state standards for public libraries. It is truly shocking the amount of damage you have done in just a few weeks of, of power to both our library and the dignity of the offices that you hold. Carolyn Derblick, you should resign. Joe McCula, you should resign. Suzanne Schoenfeld, you should resign. And if Olivia Hnushik had actually showed up tonight, I would ask her to resign as well. <laughs> A. 
language essay standards?
community uh, bodega, essentially. And it was, she was telling me this because she was describing how the boxing program saved his life and got him back out onto the streets and able to deal with it and go into, um, <clears throat> give him a place to go that wasn't in a gang or anything. And I don't think that's going to happen in Niles. But I was talking to her about it, and she's talking about how they have to leave their neighborhood to go do things. And I was talking about our library and how good it was. And I just felt blessed that we had a library that was so good. And I don't feel that you're giving the kids a place to go by cutting the hours. And I think it's important because there are kids in the city that don't have the services that we have. And I just think it's something that you should consider because there are people that envy what we have. Mm -hmm. And we should provide that to everyone. Thank you. Just clarify, Carolyn, that we do if they uh, we do have an optional section here that people can add their address or an email for response. We would need to um, listen to the video, but we could respond. We could get a copy instead because it takes so much longer. Like if somebody wants a response to their questions, couldn't they provide you with a copy? Because it takes a really long time do you not to, to try to get it off the video. And make sure that you understand what people are saying before you respond to them. It would take you two minutes to so listen what to what the people said. I mean, do they do they ever give you a document, a copy of what they're? Um, Nobody um, asked you a question. No, but this comment. you Nobody can alter the policy if you, if the board wants to alter the policy. Well, then. I just thought it would be nice to answer questions, but we no one has asked the question. No one has asked the question. Or, or correct those statements, actually. But we can move on. <laughs> okay. Um, the next speaker is uh, um, Elliot O S H E. That's me. When I signed up, I meant to make one comment. I'm going to make two. <laughs> when you walked in this evening, in the lobby. There was a big check for ten thousand dollars. Do you know what that check is for? Do you know why the library got that check? She's nodding. That check is respect from your peers. It's acknowledgement of the quality of this organization. You can destroy it. Second comment I have is a lot of people in this area have spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money putting this library together. I've been a member of the Niles community for over 20 years. I'm proud of this library. I grew up in Skokie. I spent a lot of time in the Skokie Library. If any of you have been past the Skokie Library in the last six or eight months, they've put a lot of work into that. They're not cutting hours. It's a library to be proud of. I think the changes you're suggesting, the modifications, the program reductions, eliminate this as a pride of the community. Thank you. Number 16, if that was you, did you someone sign up as number 16? Okay, we'll move on. Um, David Carabona. Good evening. I'm glad someone brought up that David, it was great. You great. A lot of stuff there. That's okay. 
There's a great comment someone brought up the 4th of July. It's a very important time. It talked, it, it's the 4th of July's result of people having strength in the face of pain and grief. You're being, you're being given a lot of pain, you're being given a lot of grief, and I warned you about it. In the first board meeting, I warned you about it um, because this is Cook County, Illinois. And one of the things you don't do is you don't cut spending. You cut spending by 14%. How dare you do that? So what if you can accomplish the same thing at 14% less expense than the average? You cut it by 14%. You know what you also did? You had a budget that was put in your lap by the previous board of about $7.4 million. And rather than saying, gee, I'm not really familiar with this, let's adopt it. But then we'll wait till next time and we'll really get down to the numbers. You know what you did? You had the nerve to give up all your personal time. And they have three budget workshops crunched together to meet the deadline that had to be met to post the budget so that there's 30 days between posting and the vote in July. How dare you do that? This is government. This is not the private sector. You're not supposed to be putting in overtime and effectiveness. And you then also wanted to know where is every dollar going? This is government. You also went into every department and interviewed the heads of the departments and you talked to the employees and saw what you're doing. You also carried over Carolyn, oh by the way, it's Derblick. Derblick. Carolyn Derblick's experience over the last six plus eight plus years in seeing and analyzing all this. You brought in Susan Schoenfeld, the voters did, who's ex very experienced in this community with an excellent re uh, reputation. What's with that? You brought in Joe McCula, Mr. Ethics in Niles and Man Township. The voters voted him in? There's a shock. What about Olivia Hanushek, who comes from a family with a beautiful last name and an excellent reputation, a woman who watches things and speaks when she deems it necessary. How dare you do that? That's what you did wrong. And you see, you're called rude and terrible. You're given all these horrible names. Your people come onto your property in your own private home. By the way, it's criminal trespass. People have gone ahead and made such remarks that really, really fall within the line of libel and slander. But what did you expect? This is Cook County only. 14%? That means 86 cents of every dollar goes to the library. 14 cents goes back to the taxpayer. So what if they're being overcharged? And you know what you did in a month? Could have been done seven, eight years ago. We had seven or eight years to do that. This budget was $7.4 million and it was on its way to $10 million. And people are not leaving Niles because of the library. Lying. People Lying. are leaving the state of Illinois, period, because the taxes suck. And the bottom line is we just lost another seat in the U.S. House of Representatives because our population is plummeting. <coughs> and I was in Arizona in January in Phoenix. And they were quite braggadocious how they're redoing all of downtown Phoenix. And I got the tour. And you know what they told me? It's all on Illinois money. Get it through your head. The library's not going anywhere, but the cheating is done. The overcharging is done. You don't take a $35,000 Chevy and charge me $60,000 for it. You don't have 115 employees operating this library. That's fraud. <laughs> and this is funny because it's funny because it's not your money. I'm sorry, you're it's supposed money. to be money. People, money. people who work 70, 80 hours a week self-employed, it's people that have to pay the higher bills for food and expenses because these taxes are passed on by retailers to the purchasers. It's people who pay higher rent because the real estate taxes are passed on to the tenants. And people say, I am done, and they leave. Time. 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 Time.
Thank you for what you do. God bless. Go ahead. <laughs> That is the end of the 24 minutes. Yeah, I'm mad at every single adult that let this happen. All of you who can vote. All of you are not ruining your future, you're ruining my future. Since Olivia didn't show, if the three of us leave, you no longer have a form. Goodbye. Okay. You couldn't give us a proper agenda, but we had nothing to look at.